السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Hi everyone, I am Ahlam Al Amri from the General Directorate of Infection Prevention and Control of Healthcare Facilities at Ministry of Health. And today I will give you a session of the all measures required related to the construction and renovation in the healthcare facilities. So construction and renovation measures in healthcare facilities is belong domain E, which is the last domain in the ICA tool uh, 2023. And this um, uh, element E5, uh, uh, it's related to the construction and renovation, consists of four sub-elements. And the activities required for auditing of these sub-elements um, required reviewing the document, which is um, uh, abbreviated as a D. And then uh, we need some method for staff interview, and which is abbreviated as SI. And also we need uh, a method and activities of observation, which is abbreviated as O. And the scoring for all these um, uh, sub-elements, it will be from zero for not met, and one for partial limit, and two for full limit, and NA for not applicable. Sub-element E.5.1, which is state that there is a written policy and procedure for the infection prevention and control consideration during the demolition, renovation, and construction projects. And this um, sub-element required uh, reviewing the document for evaluation and auditing. So um, the, the document review for this uh, statement is supposed to be reviewing the policy and procedure which is related to the construction and renovation uh, measures and which should be comprehensive and well descriptive and it's uh, supposed to be consist but not limited to all the following. So establishment of the multidisciplinary team which is uh, composed mainly of the infection prevention and control member and general services member, risk management and housekeeping and as well as biomedical and maintenance members. And those teams, they are responsible for planning and implementing proactive preventive measures for the whole duration of the construction and renovation uh, pro uh, project activities. And in establishing a clear lines of communication among all concerned to ensure the patient safety and to implement the preventive measures required to avoid any contamination or risk that will be imposed to our patients. So the first step that we have to implement uh, prior any construction and renovation projects that we have to do um, infection prevention and control risk assessment or ECRA. And the ECRA matrix uh, of a precautions for construction and renovation supposed to be consisting of a specific forms that we have to um, fill it and uh, implement it before any construction and renovation activities. Uh, we have to, all, uh, first of all, we have to identify the type of the construction project activity. Is it type A, B, or C, and D? And also we have to identify the patient risk group. So where the area that the construction or renovation will be take place. And according to that, we will identify the patient risk group. Are they um, at the high or low risk or medium risk or high risk or at the highest risk? And after that, uh, after we are um, matching the type of construction project activity and the patient risk group, we will identify the type of the construction type 1 or type 2 or type 3 or type 4. And in each type, we have a specific interventions or measures must be implemented pre the construction, during the construction, and post construction. So the same policy must be um, uh, signed from all authorized personnel, owner of the policy, a hospital director or medical director and concerned department. And, all, and always any policy that related to the infection prevention and control measures must be discussed and approved by the infection prevention and control committee members. And the same policy will be valid uh, within two to three years unless we have any changes from in the guidelines or protocols that we, we have to indicate to update our uh, current policy. And uh, always we have to um, uh, make sure that, that the, uh, the reference used for, for our policy is uh, scientific approved references such as the MWatch guidelines, CDC, WHO, and EPIC. Sub-element E.5.2 state that the IBC team is involved prior to, during, and after any construction, demolition, and reno renovation projects. Planning, ECRA, and IBC permit, continuous follow-up, and authority to stop the project. And this um, sub-element is evaluated through document review and staff interview activities. So we have to review the document which is related to this um, evaluating or this statement that 
the multidisciplinary team meetings that indicate the involvement of the infection prevention and control team in the planning and executing any construction and renovation projects. And also the infection prevention and control team, they are responsible if they noticed or report any breaches in the preventive measures that required for the construction and renovation based on the matrix of, of uh, the ICRA, that any breaches they have to report it and they have the authority to stop the activities for the renovation and um, construction activities. And also the infection prevention and control risk assessment mat mat uh, matrix uh, posted at the construction and renovation site. So uh, with all precautions that um, such as the pro uh, proactive preventive uh, measures are outlined and very well explained to the construction um, team, or at least the supervisor of each shift to be strictly implemented and maintained during the all phases of the project. So the periodic follow-up uh, from the IBC um, uh, team that to uh, monitor the practices and other preventive measures are uh, taking place and implemented in all phases of the construction and renovation project. And this is depending on the patient risk group. So the, as I mentioned earlier in the previous slide that in each uh, type uh, based on the ECRA assessment or risk assessment that it will uh, identify the type of the measures required pre the construction, during the construction, and uh, post the construction. And the IBC team, they have to follow and monitor if these um, construction and renovation preventive measures are taking place or not, and if not, they have to stop the implementing uh, the construction project at the site. And also, the, the, we have to ask um, the infection control uh, team about the uh, const, uh, control, infection control construction permit, infection control risk assessment matrix, documents for regular follow-up, and documents for stopping the construction project, if any, of ongoing um, demolition or renovation or construction project or other, um, uh, or other activities in the last projects. And uh, based on that, we evaluate um, this sub-element. So um, for the staff interview activity, we have to interview with the infection prevention and control uh, department director and uh, to um, uh, obtain uh, the answer uh, and uh, ac according to their awareness of the uh, department's involvement in the planning and executing any construction and renovation uh, project. And also, uh, we'll ask the director or the team of the infection prevention and control about the all um, required forms uh, to implement the policy of the construction and renovation uh, preventive measures uh, appropriately. And we can interview with the stakeholders of the construction and renovation projects, such as the site managers or project supervisor of the ongoing shifts, and also um, if they are familiar with the involving infection prevention and control department in every step. Uh, of the project um, uh, activities. And based on that, we will give the scoring for the sub-element. Sub-element E.5.3 state that microbiological cultures are conducted after um, construction for both step pressure isolation rooms and operating theater or when required. Examples such as an outbreak after the recommendation of the IBC team or out outbreak management team and based on the IBC recommendation. And this statement must be uh, audited uh, through the document review and staff interview activities. So the documents that need to be reviewed, um, the policy for the infection prevention and control in regard to the microbiological cultures and where the situations that require to obtain a microbiological cultures. And all the time, uh, the infection prevention and control recommendation must be followed in regard of obtaining or taking or performing the microbiological cultures. And also, um, in, uh, we have to check the previous um, uh, microbiological culture results for the previous construction and renovation activities to ensure that uh, the, only, uh, the, micro the microbiological culture only performed for the operation uh, room or um, uh, in the protective environment, for the, such as the post pressure rooms, or when required, uh, based on the recommendation of the outbreak management team or based on the infection prevention and control recommendation. Uh, in regard of the staff interview activity required for evaluating or auditing this sub-element, we need to interview and ask the staff about the infection prevention and control precautions and other preventive measures required during construction and renovation and open completion of pro a project, uh, which should be, uh, such as microbiological culture, should be done before opening of the OR and um, uh, protective environment rooms and after construction and renovation projects at this um, area. And also, uh, we can ask them uh, in regard of the corrective interventions if the culture results were positive, and also we can interview them in regard of the microbiological culture during outbreak situation. So, oh, and uh, based on their answers uh, during the interview, we can score the sub-element. 
Sub element E.5.4 state that the IBC measures are followed during the construction, demolition, and renovation projects by using the infection control risk assessment or ECRA. And this sub element requires document observation and staff interview activities. So we have to review um, the following documents such as um, the ECRA or the infection control risk assessment, which is supposed to be involved the uh, type of the uh, construction project activity and also the the type of the uh, risk, such as is it uh, low risk or medium risk or high risk or the highest risk, and also we need to entail or require IBC precautions uh, based on type 1 or type 2 or type 3 or type 4 after matching the, uh, the, uh, the type of construction project activity with the uh, category of the patient's uh, risk, and is uh, supposed to be signed by all involved uh, stakeholders or uh, members. And uh, for, uh, for the observation activity to evaluate uh, this element, we need to observe and check the presence of formulated ECRA that is posted appropriately in the visual catchment of a personnel involved in the construction and renovation activities. And also we have to watch if all IBC practices and other preventive um, uh, measures highlighted in the ECRA are strictly implemented and continuously practiced or not. For the staff interview part or method, we need to um, interview with the staff about the IBC precaution and other general preventive measures required during the construction and renovation and open completion of the project. Is it type one or two or three and four? Example, in the isolation areas, traffic control plan with signed uh, placement, moving placement or exhaustion of air in the construction site directly outside or use of negative pressure or HEPA filter to contain a dust or other dust uh, suppression me mechanism. This is the first step that is um, uh, for the ECRA, so we need to uh, identify the type of the activity Is it and based on that activities uh, mentioned in this table, you can identify which type, is it type A or B or C or D. The second step, uh, we need to use the uh, following table to identify the patient risk group and uh, based on the area where the construction or renovation taking place, we can identify the risk group of that patient, so is it uh, low risk? medium risk, high risk, or the highest risk. And the final uh, step, step three, is we need to match the risk group, low or medium, or high or the highest with the planned construction project type. Is it A or B or C or D? And based on that, we'll identify the construction project type. Is it type one or two or three or four? And uh, after that, we'll have um, a, a table um, that uh, identifying and, and uh, documenting all the activities required or interventions required um, pre the construction, during the construction, and both uh, construction based on the type that obtained uh, after matching in this matrix. So this is the final step um, that the, uh, we have the description of the required infection control precautions and activity based on the uh, matched matrix in the previous slide. So it will give us all the interventions required or measures required uh, uh, before the construction, during the construction, and after construction based on the class. Is it class one or two or three or four? Finally, thank you so much for attending this session. And if you have any further inquiry or question, do not hesitate to contact us through the GDIBC website or through the direct contacting through the mobile or through the WhatsApp um, uh, application if you have any questions, or you can directly contact to your regional um, ICA coordinator uh, if you have any uh, further um, uh, required um, explanations. And um, we have also the GDIBC, GDIBC website. You can uh, go through it and find all these um, lectures recorded and further supplementary educational materials.